एवरीवन वेलकम बैक अगेन दिस इज वीडियो नंबर टू इन ए जी नाइन हंड्रेड विद पियूष आई होप यू वुड हैव वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियो इन विच यू हैव डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग एंड फ्यू अदर थिंग्स इफ यू हैवन फील फ्री टू वॉच दैट बिफोर दिस वीडियो एज दैट वन इज द प्री रिक्वेजेड Please watch this video till the end because we will be doing some knowledge checks at the end and make sure to uh, document all the learnings in a blog post or a LinkedIn post and share your learning with the other fellow learners so that we can learn from each other and let's start the video all right so let's have a look at the difference between public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud in public cloud resources are shared among multiple users and customers only pay for the resources that they use these public clouds are the cloud providers such as aws azure gcp oracle cloud and there are many more in private cloud resources are not shared with other organizations which provides greater control and security so these are generally the organization that have their own data center and they help other customers to host their workload on their data center in hybrid cloud customer uses both public and private cloud in an interconnected environment public clouds are generally hosted and operated by a third party cloud service provider such as aws azure gcp alibaba oracle and so on private clouds are normally operated and maintained by a single organization a private cloud may be hosted on premises or in a data center so generally it's a private data center from some cloud provider hybrid cloud provide extra layer of security as you can choose which resources to keep in private cloud and which resources to deploy in public cloud let's take an example public cloud is like taking a bus where other passengers will also share the ride with you and you don't have to worry about the physical maintenance or the capital expenditure and you only pay when you ride the bus which is pay per use private cloud however is like driving your own car where you buy the car first which is a capital expenditure and you are responsible for its maintenance but you get more control over it like who can drive the car or who can ride with you you can lock it up in a garage hence provide more control over the security as well hybrid cloud is like a combination of both you drive to work on your own car but you use public commute when driving elsewhere this allows you to take the advantage of both the features in public cloud there is generally no or minimum capital expenditure to scale up in private cloud there is a high capital expenditure as you first buy the servers even if there is the private data center in public cloud resources can be provisioned or decommissioned on demand and you only pay for what you use however in private cloud you purchase the hardware first before you start using the services in hybrid cloud resources can be added on demand by scaling up in the public environment so let's say you are using a hybrid cloud where you have your own premises infrastructure as well as your cloud infrastructure whenever you want to scale up you add your resources in the cloud infrastructure rather than the on prem infrastructure in that way you can save the additional capital expenditure on that all right so let's talk about the benefits of using cloud computing the first one is high availability and fault tolerance it means that your application is designed and configured to be available even if there is any hardware or software failure and will always be responding to the customers and the traffic so let's have a look at with the help of an example you have your user which is accessing an application this application is accessible via a load balancer dns but let's for the sake of uh, simplicity let's just call it an app and it has a backend server which is vm1 and it has another backend server vm2 so it is designed in such a way that even if there is a vm failure application will still be able to respond back to the customer using vm2 right and the same way these vms are listening to a database on the back end let's call it db1 this is your master db and then there is a db2 which is your read only or slave database 
so these are replicated synchronously so even if there is a database failure your application will still be able to respond to the customer using the secondary database right? so this is how the application was designed so that even if a failure happen it should always be responding to the customer and it is available all the time let's have a look at another example let's say in case when vm2 goes down the application there will be a lot of load on vm1 let's say it was running on 50 percent cpu utilization but with the traffic of vm2 being redirected to vm1 the load will increase to let's say 90 percent to avoid that situation and to avoid the vm1 to crash we can put these vms behind a vm scale set so if you have worked with aws before it is like auto scaling group like if you do not know about it don't worry we will cover this in uh, in the coming lectures so just uh, i'll just quickly explain it to you what it is so vm scale set is nothing but it has a template right so whenever there is a failure let's say the vm2 goes down using this template over here vm scale set will provision a new vm right so now the app will be listening to vm1 and vm3 it will make sure that we always have at least two instances listening to the app front end right now let's talk about uh, another important uh, benefit which is scalability scalability is nothing but the ability of the system to adjust according to the demand let's say you have customer which is accessing an application right this application has only one backend which is vm1 there is not a lot of load on the server right now hence uh, whenever customer is accessing the application he is able to get the reply back from the application but as soon as we have number of users increase let's say the user count has increased from 1 to 10 and all of them will be accessing this application at the same time then this server will be in on high load right there will be high cpu utilization high memory utilization and whatnot in the regular scenario this application will crash and the user will not be able to get any results back so this will result in a bad customer experience and might be revenue loss avoid that there is this concept of scalability in which we can either replace this vm to a bigger vm let's say vm2 VM2 will have more power, more uh, RAM, and all the resources that is required to be accessed by these many users. Right? So VM1 will be replaced by VM2. So this type of scaling is known as vertical scaling, in which we are replacing the existing infrastructure with a bigger infrastructure. Now this scalability has certain disadvantages one of them will be there would be some downtime in this process like when you provision a new vm and replace that with the older vm in that time when the switch is happening there would be downtime that customer will be facing and this is not possible to do that like let's say 10 times a day whenever there is certain increase in the traffic you would want to replace it with the bigger vm when it is cooled down you want to replace it again back with the smaller vm it is not a feasible solution to do every time what we want to do is we would want to add some additional vms to handle the load let's say we added three more vm so instead of vm1 we have vm1 vm2 and vm3 so this vm will still be there and we added two additional vms to handle the load Right. So this type of scalability is called horizontal scalability. So there are a lot of benefits with the horizontal scalability. Let's say you have 10 users and you have scale out your system to three VMs. But whenever the users stopped accessing the application, there is let's say just one user, the application should be able to scale down back to one VM. Right. 
because we are on a consumption based model. So we should be able to scale down as well whenever there is not a lot of load on the system. But we have uh, learned so far. So let's say you have this VM1. When you want to replace this VM1 with the bigger VM, VM2. So this one is no longer existed and this is your active VM. So this type of scalability is called vertical scaling. And in the same way, when you have VM1 over here, and to handle the additional load, you are adding few more VMs, say VM2 and VM3. So this kind of scaling is called horizontal scaling. Just remember horizontal scaling is the preferred method in most of the cases, but sometimes vertical scaling is also preferable as per the use case. It would have some downtime and this is not a favorable solution. But then we have elasticity. So elasticity is similar to scalability. It's just elasticity happen automatically. That means instead of someone manually scaling up or down the system, there should be a mechanism. Like in AWS, we have auto scaling groups, which takes care of this feature. In Azure, we have VM scale set. In GCP, we have instance groups. So these all services will make sure that system will be able to scale up and down based on the demand. The next benefit of using cloud is cost effectiveness. So we have two important concepts such as pricing calculator and then ECO, which is total cost of ownership. In pricing calculator, we can Estimate the price of using Azure services. Like let's say you need to have a VM with 12 gigs of memory and 80 GB of hard disk, HDD in US central one and all the other features like uh, availability and uh, performance and everything. And based on that, this pricing calculator will provide you an estimated cost. So you have something that you could uh, treat that as estimate and work on that. With total cost of ownership, it's like when you have to calculate the cost of uh, ownership when you move from on-premises to cloud. So it provides you an estimate of cost on how much you are uh, paying on on-premises and how much you will be paying in cloud. Based on that, it will tell you how much cost you will be saving when you move to cloud. Right? So it will be a summary report. There would be some report generated. So we will be looking into these two concepts, pricing calculator and total cost of ownership at the end of this course. But for now, just uh, remember these two points that I have discussed. Pricing calculator is to provide the estimate of cost for using Azure services and total cost of ownership provide you estimate of total savings that you could have when migrating from on-premises to cloud. Okay, so we are on the knowledge checks now. Yeah, like you would have done in the previous video, take the screenshot of this page as well as this page and try to answer all these questions. If you don't know the answers, just go ahead and revisit the video. All the answers would be there in the video itself. And even if you are still not able to get it, make sure you add those queries in the comment section below. And I will try to answer those questions in our upcoming uh, Q&A session on Saturday. I hope this video was also somewhat beneficial to you and you have learned something out of it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family and colleagues so that others can also take advantage of it. And let me know in the comment section below what you think about the video, any feedback that you might have or any queries that you have related to the video that we have just discussed. And uh, I will try to answer those as soon as possible or in the upcoming Q&A session on Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you have a good day.